to już musimy iść na żywioł. <laughs> Ale to zdaje się jest codzienność. I think this is the, the, the your in your daily work to do things life. Uh, hello once again on this Sunday, the film Spring Open Sunday from all our fantastic guests. This one works with the most unpredictable matter in the most unpredictable, incredible conditions that you cannot control. Neither with perfect equipment nor with great money, not even with Steven Spielberg saying action because it's it ca you can do it because it's nature and this is totally unpredictable and how to make the most beautiful nature nat film about nature which captivate our um, attention capture our attention it will uh, you will hear, hear about that from Arthur Homan the tutor of our f uh, nature film group in film spring open Yes. On the film spring, the, the protagonist is a human being, and all those shows, all those presentations, all the realizations relate to humans. Uh, however, I just wanted to sort of divert your attention in a totally different uh, way, uh, like a, a, a desolate places, into to my protagonists who are animals. There are birds, mammals. Mm, reptilians, amphibians, but also <coughs> flowers <coughs> and uh, insects and other uh, also other plants. I will show you a fragments of my films and I will discuss with you from the behind the scenes how they were made and how um, I've managed to or I failed to manage the film my protagonists and uh, how much time, usually it was a lot of time, how much it took me to film them. Let's start with a short film about a cuckoo. Many of you probably knows what sort of uh, bird it is. Almost everybody knows their its voice. And probably you also know that a cuckoo, as the only um, species like that, uh, plants, so, so to speak, its eggs to, to foster parents. It never um, sort of takes, mm, the overlooks its own, uh, looks over its own mm, eggs. And we'll see here the life of a small cuckoo and what it happened, what happened at the foster parents' nest. Nearby, in an even smaller nest, the great reed the Eurasian reed warbler sits on an egg. You can see a small, however, it is not a small uh, warbler. Two weeks before, um, secretly, a cuckoo laid its egg among the eggs of um, of uh, among the eggs of the warbler. The warbler does not did not see the ruse and feeds it like its own uh, child. The small cuckoo starts to throw out the eggs of uh, reed warbler warblers. If it doesn't do it, the birds will not be able to uh, to feed all the mm, uh, all its children. The first attempts are failed. The cuckoo is still too weak. Again, it tries to throw out the egg. It, it has to bring it over the edge of the nest. It is a huge um, effort. This is incredible how determined this small uh, animal, how determined this small animal is to get rid of the competition. After a few hours of rest, it uh, makes another attempt. This this time, it's successful. The first egg is in the water. Uh, 
przy wyrzucaniu drugiego. With throwing out uh, the other one, it almost falls into the water itself. Ostatnie jaj. And the last egg. Wreszcie jest sama. Finally, it is alone. Stale otwarty, so the, the open red beak and its shriek mobilizes uh, where it wobbles to bring the feed. Now all the uh, all the spiders and all the uh, mm, all the insect gets into into its beak. Thanks to intensive feeding over s several days, the cuckoo achieves the size of a grown up uh, of a grown up bird. It is so big that sitting in the nest, it has to keep very hard, to hold hold on very hard, not to fall down. With a with a yes, with a strong uh, wind, the nest can break down at any moment. Even though the cuckoo is right now much bigger than the warblers, the birds are still treating it as its own uh, child. Even after it, it will, even after it it leaves the nest, uh, they will bring the food for several days. At the end of August, uh, the cuckoo will will travel alone to Africa to to come back uh, next year and plant its egg uh, to another pair of uh, reed warblers. <coughs> Okay, that was the cuckoo. It it uh, it, it got a huge uh, wave of hate on in social media. Comparable, it was compared to the biggest uh, um, uh, uh, criminals uh, of the world. But you know, the life of 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 cuckoo is not like uh, all all a bed of roses. It was about it was a film about the nature uh, of a given region. It was not the biography of of a cuckoo, so it was just a cameo. Uh, let me just refer to a few important elements. Cuckoos do not have it that easy. Let me just tell you that the film that you've seen today was realized in in three different cuckoo nests or warbler nests over two years. I'll tell you why. The cuckoos in general plant their eggs to small birds, let's say the birds with a, or, or with a very small brains which are not able to discern to, 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 to tell the egg of the cuckoo from their own eggs. However, sometimes it happens that they also try to plant it to a bigger species, um, the, uh, a cousin to this reed warbler is great reed warbler. So if the cuckoo tries to plant the, the, it to the great reed warbler, the great reed warbler can tell that it's not their uh, egg, and even though it cannot throw it out, throw it out, uh, throw, throw the egg with, with its beak, it, uh, it's more, uh, it, it pays better or it's more efficient for the uh, for the warbler to leave this, to the abandon this nest and um, and to create another nest and lay eggs again. So, so they base on very small birds which take the ruse or they can be tricked with this method. However, this has its consequences. Of course, in social in the social media there was such remark, okay, if this cuckoo found itself in the in the nest, maybe it should not throw out the eggs, let it be them live together, uh, you know, with the young of the family, we'll let them all live in peace and, and happiness. Unfortunately, this is not possible because the two small uh, warblers, reed warblers, would not be able to feed their young and the young of the cuckoo. So the fate is sealed for the young for the young reed warblers. So the young cuckoo has to eat as much food, so much food, to grow um, as the four small Eurasian reed warblers. However, the small cuckoo uh, got to perfection the method of forcing of forcing the being fed, forcing the the foster farms to, uh, um, to to feed her, to feed it to feed it. The reed warblers bring in more food to the cuckoo than to the four young. How do they how 
how does it do it? A young cuckoo makes a certain a shriek which is so intensive, as intensive as four or more um, young of the warbler. So first is a voice, is a very, very loud shriek. It, it demands food, which stimulates the parents to bring food. And the second thing, uh, which is very characteristic, is that the the throat of, of all those mm, all of, of this purpose kind of of uh, birds are red of course you know that the, the, the fastest cards are the red ones the faster even are the yellow ones and the cuckoo use that color to the max so the, it has a very very red color which uh, sort of stimulates the parents to to feeding it and thanks to that the amount of food that is being um, brought by the by the parents is very very big is, is very very big well this trait of uh, of the cuckoo this shrieking and r this demanding food uh, makes it easier to to locate it by the uh, by the predators and many small cuckoos are uh, die because when they demand food some fox or some other um, uh, animal like that walking not far away here hears that sound and very easily um, can it can become prey to a fox or or another animal of that sort another thing related to cuckoos is that they are much bigger later than than the the youngs that the young of the of their foster parents so unfortunately when the one trains the the, the, the Eurasian reed warbler covers or protects the young by sitting on on its young and the young are uh, safe and uh, and dry whereas the cuckoo is so big already that when it rains the uh, its foster parent cannot protect it from the uh, from the rain and then they s get soaked in water and quite often they get they they get too cold and die so if you've got uh, very intensive summer rains many of those cuckoos die in such a way that they are soaked and they they get too cold and this nest is so small that and it's not calculated for the for the mm, mass of the cuckoo that's sitting on it that a stronger wind or a, or a storm can create the can make this nest to collapse under the 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 weight of the cuckoo and it lands lands in the water which is just beneath the the reeds so many of the uh, nests that we filmed many of those cuckoos died in the process we did not present that on the film but uh, this way or another it is not such a sweet life of a parasite as uh, somebody could imagine from at a glance of course and nature natural fi film of nature film consists of many um, elements we film animals mammals amphibians but also plants now i wanted to show you a fragment of in which 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 shows the which shows the um, the, the forest carpet uh, where you where you have enough sun getting on the on the on the bottom of the forest and the plants from the bottom of the forest start to start to bloom and they create those beautiful flower carpets in the spring forest
So here I showed a technique we, which, of course, have be, has been on for, for years, the, 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 the firm technique, uh, which something which happens in nature for, like for, for a long time, and we want to show it in a short time. And of course, we, we use this technique by, by lighting a frame like every some sequence of time, like every half an, half an hour, depending of how this pro how fast the, the, a given process takes place. So here we had the development or the growth of uh, the plants that took several days, and they were show, uh, shown over several seconds. So at some point, of course, it was so that the operator was the, the op was sitting at the camera when we said he was sitting by a camera with a timer or a stopper and uh, and he would press the release button and he would he and by that he he, he was lighting frame by frame or he was developing frame by frame thankfully the those times have passed and now you just leave the camera with the timer and uh, the film is made automatically although many people think that these pictures were made in a natural way in the forest and it is not so. This is all made in studio because the conditions in nature are so varied and so random when it comes to rain, sun, the changes of light, that at some point, despite regardless of, uh, despite many attempts, we didn't manage to do that. And we had to transfer that and, and, and we had to make this sort of a plantation of those uh, uh, forest plants, uh, we, we brought uh, that to the studio to make those shots. Not many colorful birds in Poland, like in the trop uh, tropical forests where you go, uh, you, you, you see this madness of uh, forms and colors. In Poland, in Poland we have few, um, we have a few um, species which are colorful, like um, among them, for example, um, Eurasian Hupo. And this was made for the film uh, about old lonely trees or in the alleys, which are incredibly precious for the, for the environment, for nature, for the people. It's never, it's not really well. It 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 it's, it almost makes has no value apart from burning. But for nature, they are extremely important because um, the holes appear there. For example, uh, made by birds or made na in a, in another natural way, which become the breeding place for both other birds and uh, insects, for example. This was the, the case when I was looking quite long for the Eurasian hupo to, to find it in a, some kind of a tree, tree opening, tree um, hole to look. I was looking for a long time for, for an interest in it, and quite often I, for, for during, during my first attempt, I found something like that under, under the, uh, at the meadow under the, the pile of thrash, so it was a horrible place. The same, I found the second one in some sort of a, a, a demolished uh, house, and there were like uh, pieces of bricks left, and again, uh, another Another pair of um, of hoopos found an ideal place to live there, and only at, after several attempts I found a hoopo which actually um, conformed to that criteria, and uh, and had those and had those breeding had the, the his breeding place in the uh, tree stump. Thank you. 
to jak Państwo zauważyli, wystąpił you jeszcze noted, jeden zwierzak. Mianowicie we had one more animal shown here. It was wielki owad, 6 cm pogrąca ogródku działkowego. A mole cricket, uh, which is a, a bane of the um, vegetable plots. Uh, the horticultural is hated because it eats the, the roots of vegetables, and but it doesn't like chemical. It's it's not very. Um, I mean, there's less and, and less of that because we have a lot of chemistry in the ground. You know, this hoopo is like an un untypical representative of our um, uh, avian fauna when it comes to uh, colors and shapes. I will show you frogs, which are also untypical. Because they are called, they are called blue frogs, because they are blue. They s some people think that it's possible on somewhere on the Amazon River that we have colored frogs. We have things like that in Poland too. They are called the blue frogs, as I've mentioned. And this you will see uh, in a moment. You will see a short film about those frogs. In the beginning of April, at this shallowest part of the pool, you can see blue frogs. Not all of you, not all, not all people know about their existence. These are the male blue frogs. This incredible, they, they get this in incredible hue only during the mating season, which uh, lasts for only a week. The, the males come to the pool as the first one, waiting for the females. They are they uh, sing their mating song. They're, they're very active in terms of movement. They observe their around env environment closely, looking for, uh, for a mate. When they notice a female, all they all move toward in her direction. It occurs, however, that it's easy to make a mistake. This time it was uh, a common toad and not a blue frog female. Well, blue frogs, it, it's similar to the Hupo, it, it was not easy to film it our outright because, it, because for the blue frogs to acquire this blue color, you, you need a lot of sun. So if we have a spring and there's a lot of w with a lot of clouds, then the uh, mating season is very extend. Not inten it's not very intensive, and also the b the frogs do not get the blue hue. And if you have a yearly like that, you will film nothing, and you have to wait for a spring for those two weeks at the end of the March and the beginning of April, where the where you have a lot of sun and those frogs are already getting the right colors. Well, the changes of uh, the climate change, which we have right now, so less and less precipitation, makes these frogs, as many other um, animals, there are less and less of them. These frogs, in order to mate, in order to, to lay eggs, they need very shallow um, water reservoirs, which were created quite often from uh, melting snow, and they were filling some area let's say, because right now usually we have no snow during the winter. In the spring there are all practically no um, floodings or uh, water reservoirs, temporary water reservoirs, where they could lay their eggs, and these populations can die out one after another. This is how it is with frogs. And now, apart from the fact that we have protagonists, our animal and uh, plant pro vegetable, vegetable protagonists, I really like various um, weather phenomena which are taking, which are occurring because it is. Uh, you you cannot feel that in the in this uh, in the town because if it's raining or not, you either go stay at home or you take uh, an umbrella with you. Whereas 
in outdoors you are condemned to to live with the weather that is there so if we want for example the film to be made we try to shoot it during worse weathers for example too uh, so i want to show you a fragment when this is also um, a late motif of the film June storms are not a rare occurrence. High temperature and high humidity of uh, the air evoke or cause uh, sudden storms. The young wi white storks do not have their feathers well developed yet, that's why their parents uh, keep them safe from the rain. Soaked, they, are, uh, they can easily get cold and lose temperature, they lose energy. And the long, Long rains can cause the death of all the uh, young storks from cold. Thankfully this time uh, the shower was very short. Um, okay, the, the, the cattle was there because that, that was a film about um, a village in, in Mazuria, Zhivkovo, uh, where the number of stock is, is timed four times higher than the number of inhabitants. And also it included those characteristic elements for uh, or this extensive uh, farming which now is dying out or some individual cows and etc etc let's go back to the birds now i wanted to show you um, a species with which i spent about three weeks sitting together with them in the water these are small birds which are called the little bitterns they live in reeds I don't know. I know because I know there's a there, there, there are all. Uh, there were, I don't know where the name came from. It's a smaller version of the. I wanted to show you here um, a species I was present with. I'm, I was st staying with for no, almost non-stop in the water, and whose life as the young did not leave the nest, I was participating. Little bitterns. On one of the pools, uh, on, in one of the ponds, in the deep reeds, the smallest, the smallest of our herons, little bitterns hit their nest. The young are waking up from the afternoon uh, nap. They are waiting for the parents to come back to come back with the food. Uh, the, wa the water, uh, the still water in the in the pool, uh, breeds uh, mosquitoes, which really are a, mm, a nuisance for the young, attacking the uh, their flesh next next to their beaks and eyes. The young. Uh, little bitterns try to get rid of the mosquitoes. However, there are too many mosquitoes for them to 
to achieve that. So waiting for the parents is becoming long. The young, the young uh, little bitches are very hungry already. Finally, uh, the male appears. He's very, very careful. He look, he observes the surroundings of the nest very minutely and very carefully. When he notices, when he finally s decides that there is no threat, uh, the youngest of them immediately attacks uh, the beak of the parent, demanding the food which was brought in bo uh, by the father. All the young are are attacking the frog which was brought by the by the parent they fight with all their might finally the the, the oldest one wins the youngest ones and the smallest uh, one is still hungry it begs for food Finally, it can feed itself. With, dif with difficulty, it swallows a frog which is not much smaller than it is. And now it's time for the next. It's now it's time for the next nap. The young sit by the by their father who's sitting on the nest like a hen. <laughs> yes, as you probably noticed, there were plenty of uh, mosquitoes there and after making this film, when somebody asked me what are the most most dangerous animals in Poland, uh, and I'm, I must say that that mosquitoes are the most dangerous because they 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 um, uh, pestered me as much as they did to those little bitterns. Now let's move on to the to the filming um, behind the scenes. How do you make uh, a, a, fil a nature film? What is the most important in nature films? Well, I believe that the base basis for this is the knowledge, ab the natural, the knowledge about the biology of a given species. This is something that is indispensable because without that, it's very difficult to make a, a movie. The where the, where the animals are uh, the protagonists, because so you need to know about p p natural phenomena, about species, etc. The second thing is the knowledge of the area. Practically, the, the same time is spent in the preparation of, of a in the making of the nat nature film is finding and discovering our protagonists, where their habits, where they come to play, where they come to eat. And this is like an endless uh, work, wor uh, working in the, uh, in the field, looking for places. The, the more varied is the area, the, the more difficult it is to reach, the more time you have to devote to, to find your protagonists and to discover all those places where they like to s spend time and to learn their daily cycle or the, their life cycle. Then when it comes to filming them, the animals which live around us, as you probably know, are afraid of humans. So this is, this is embedded through ages of because in the central Europe uh, animals were hunted so these animals always identify humans as a threat we have to most often hide our presence from those animals so that they don't know that this human is somewhere around because if they will know it then we stand no chance to approach them to a such a distance which will allow us to film them properly and this usually means several meters to, to a dozen meters. If we want to make portraits, that would that means three meters for some mm, species. With some species, it's enough to have like 
masking net. We hide ourselves under uh, under this net. We we stop moving for several hours, and over some water or some stream, we can film. Um, like uh, all sorts of uh, birds, like those who are very fast birds who are um, fishing in the stream, and it is possible. But in the majority of cases, such net is not enough because fr from behind that net, y you know, our we can be see moving. There is all the majority of. Uh, species is allergic to the movement and we usually have to set up some sort of a hideaway so a hiding uh, hideout usually we call it um, a shed uh, we put up a tent of various materials here is just a standard net which then tries tries to blend into the biotope uh, which will be the the scene for our filming usually we put the the net over it which mm, gives a, the impression of something natural and then you add some material which is somewhere around so that this hide hideout is at least partly similar to the surrounding and in this way in such a hideout quite often for many days or hours for days you spend time there to trying to peep at our protagonist quite often you put it um, a days before the shooting so that the animals can get used to something new happening in, in the location and after two or three days we enter the hideouts in order to film the rule of entering such a hideout is uh, is uh, is old as the world itself uh, is that you always two at least two people have to go into the hi the hideout the one stays the other one leaves because in this way the animals think that the person who came uh, left them because they cannot count and they cannot identify this place that it can be that, that, they could, that somebody could be hiding them if you went there alone i assure you that uh, animals follow a human being um, in the location well, the we are being watched by animal eyes we don't even know we're being observed so for example um, uh, an eagle can see us from two from almost a mile away where you we were moving and if we wanted to film uh, the eagle and we enter the hideaway ourselves we can be sure that it will never fly close to you because they will know that this is where danger is this is where the human danger is a predatory human animal that's why always you need those two people to approach and enter this hideout. One of these persons stay and the other one leaves. Of course, you can try to do it during the night too, because the day animals usually have bad eyesight. So we, when we enter during the night and we leave during the night, they uh, do not expect that there is some danger lurking there in the form of a DOP with a camera. <coughs> Quite often, especially on the mm, on the ponds, I was I was creating like uh, uh, places which were standing there for months or years. Even they were made out of reed, and in this way, uh, then when the new reed was uh, growing there, it covered very closely those those uh, hideouts. So you know there was there was some mold on it growing, and from a few meters you could not see that any that anything is happening in there so all methods are good to hide yourself from the potential eyes of our protagonists quite often as is as what with the uh, little bitterns you spend a lot of time in the water because these the bitterns had their nest in the m meter deep water so from dawn to dusk i was sitting on a stool up to my neck in the water 
and I was trying not to move too much uh, try, uh, when I was uh, sort of uh, you know, being bitten by, by mosquitoes because the repellent do not work too well and for too long and the, and the person who's covered under the masking net you, 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 you become sweaty and the camera and, and sorry and the uh, uh, mosquitoes really you are a great joy to them you also have to save your equipment from any potential during the filming or in, in the rain. There are methods like that. Uh, well, an umbrella is a really a very good um, way to hide, to, pr to protect the equipment from the rain. What are the best times for filming nature? Unfortunately for me, the best time is dawn. I am not one of those people who like to get up very early. And this always is connected with a big, it's a always a big challenge for me. So that's why I always to go to the hiding place in the evening, sleep in the, in the hideout and film from there in the morning. But you know, all the, all the animals are, are active in the morning. They wake up, they, they are hungry, they are looking for food. And this activity, this morning activity is quite large. Then during the, uh, around noon, they have their siesta, they have their nap, they uh, power nap, and in the evening they start to be active again. Thankfully for us, the fact that they, they, they are, they have, their life is most, most intense. Uh, in the morning has a positive uh, um, trait that you know the morning light is really great it's pretty delicate then during the noon of course it's much the sun is much more unforgiving in terms of filming because you have a lot of contrast and also with the natural the, the nature film the, the, the basic things are long long lenses where later where this uh, uh, becomes um, hotter, uh, you start to get the noise uh, in the frame. Uh, between the, you know, the, the noise between the, uh, from the air between the lens and the protagonist. The most frequent way are those hideouts. The, the most frequent method is, is this hideout. But this is a great thing when you're filming birds because the birds are, you know, the, the, they're basic, um, they're really good at uh, in, in their eyesight, but they do not have a very good uh, sense of smell. So let's, uh, apart from maybe ravens, but if we don't give them a reason for them to see a human being, then everything works well, regardless from which way the, the wind comes. If we have birds in before us, uh, they won't react. However, the mammals, like, like deer, like uh, an elk, like boars, their main sense, sense is the sense of smell. So they don't even see you, but if they smell you, they will get scared. So the basic thing is the direction of, of the wind. If, it's, if it blows from us towards the animal, there's no chance for us to approach it regardless of how well you mask yourself. Therefore, well, and the wind quite often changes direction. It blows differently during the uh, in, during the dawn and then later it changes direction. That's why these hideouts and these shoes do not uh, work well because we do, we cannot move them during the filming. And sorry, the, 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 those those hideouts do not work well. So the, there is a solution of of dressing up in a camouflage um, suit. Then we, we can take a camera on our shoulder and then sort of a. Uh, hide under some bush and put some masking net on the camera and if we don't move and our and the wind is um, to our advantage then a, a group of deer can approach us to a an approach us um, to a distance which allow would allow us to film so one of the things for filming are these uh, suits so sometimes especially if you're sitting in during the autumn at the mating ground mating ground of the deer and you have plenty of people in the forest co collect picking mushrooms then we're able and when we're in such a suit we are able to scare the mushroom pickers because uh, if they see somebody like that emerging from 
the forest, especially in, among elderly ladies, it can no, evoke to panic. To and these are the examples of, sh of the shots which I made in this way. So using this sort of uh, this sort of a uh, sniper uh, outfit. Of course, apart from the morning, the evening is also an interesting moment where when something more is happening in the nature before the animals go to sleep. Just like here, as you can see at the, um, at the uh, meeting ground of, uh, of uh, birds where, where they sort of as a safe place for, for night time. And these are like a lightweight work, so working on the meadow, filming some flowers which also appear in the film as you have probably noticed because I spend a lot of time uh, out in the open then you try to to bring some civilization with them so I you always uh, always after the shooting if I if I have a chance I always try to set up a, uh, a camp where I could make a coffee and that's it. At the end, maybe I will present to you some film. Let me see which sort of film that could be. Oh, about young, maybe young birds, Żywkowo and young white dogs. And we'll see a, a moment of that film. The, the area of Żywkow is full of small ponds and rivers, and they make this terrain extremely interesting and varied. When the rights of property to individual nests are established, the uh, white dogs start to sit on their eggs. Also, their nearest neighbors started mating. Sitting on eggs with small birds uh, uh, lasts for about two weeks. The, the stalks have to be much more patient. It's m as much as 35 days. When, when, the, wide when the big wide open appear in the nest, the parents have no time for themselves anymore. Well, the, sing the singing birds have yellow... Uh, Mm, orange or even red inside of the beak. This is a signal for the big, f for their parents, where they should put the uh, the food. The, during the uh, during the feeding season, the parents have to feed themselves and the young too. The need f of the young for the food is higher than the young ones. Um, in the first part, during the first part of their life, they eat uh, daily the tw twice the volume of their of their body in food. And after sev they, they grow very fast, and after several days they leave the nest. A, a, pair, a pair of great tits come with the food um, several times a day. Over, they will visit during the uh, feeding se season. They visit their nest uh, over seven thousand times. The, the birds are active for several hours uh, every day. So, uh, feeding the birds are is a titanic work for those small animals. Contrary to the neighbors, uh, during that time uh, the white stalks do not have much to do. After a short but very intensive feeding period, there are only empty nests left. Uh, 
All right. I think this could be the end of my lecture, unless you have some questions. All right. Okay. I have a question regarding the first film about the cuckoo because the eggs of a cuckoo are so similar to the eggs of the Eurasian reed warbler. How did you manage to how did you manage to find that nest? How did you see how the um, the um, cuckoo planted the the eggs? No, no, it's not that easy to plant. In fact, uh, actually, as you've mentioned, it was so that I tried to find the nest by myself and for one season I was sieving through uh, the reed fields and I must say that once I've managed to find one because it is slightly different it's slightly bigger and when you find uh, like dozens of nests with the uh, with the Eurasian reed warbler uh, eggs you will see that one is slightly different however at that time I didn't manage to film the nest that I found because it was on a on a small dried out area where people were present every now like quite often so then I've learned that the, a group of people from Wrocław make research about uh, about the, the Eurasian green warbler and they have a place of teeming with the, the nests of Eurasian reed warbler. So I went to them to ask them because they they were sort of looking at those nests every three uh, days, you know, checking things, measuring things. So I went to them and told them, if you had any warb reed warbler nest where a cuckoo would plant an egg, just let me know. And it occurred that, in fact, this is what happened. And uh, I, I got an information from them. Uh, I was tipped by them. One of the three cuckoos that was shown in this film was the one was the one filmed in that location I wanted to ask you about the the, the mammals like yeah, the, the mammals, yes. Mm. Which mistakes, mistakes can we make so that, that the will prevent those animals from approaching us? It's like non-filming um, non question. Uh, I, 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 I do have a, yeah, uh, as a scary way animal. So you want to, I want to scare away animals from my dog, yeah, who likes to hunt. Okay, this so you want to do, want to do the opposite that I do every uh, in my, throughout my whole life. Well. First of all, you need to be loud because the animals have a great uh, hearing. This is one of the methods in Canada, in, in the States, not, for a, to not, to not to stumble upon a bear. They tell people to talk loud when they walk around the paths in the forest so that these animals are uh, can hear, could hear that the person is approaching, the man is approaching because the animals don't want to meet us, so that they could leave before where they see us. Because, you know, uh, with the sand you can always, the, 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 the wind can be in another direction, so it can be... But, but being loud, certainly, because if we talk silently, it, it may be so that this animal will not sense us um, and will not hear us. Can I have one more question? So, how do you film birds in a, in a city or ru urban or environment, just yes, as it was in your uh, film, like yeah, the leftovers, where the great tits made the nest, or between the um, between old bricks? How to do it not to scare them away and not to make the, the parents to leave that nest behind? This is also a question of um, experience. This is how I do it. 
Stawiam ukrycie. Most often, gdzieś troszkę dalej. What I do, I'm leaving my hideaway a bit further away. And during the several days, of, I can bring it closer a bit until I'm at the at the distance. Um, which allows me to 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 film, and with small birds, uh, it's enough to for them to accept this. Uh, especially in the uh, that in the ur urban environment, a lot of elements are changing all the time around, uh, so they accept those changes that are happening. Because if you, for example, if you have a pigeon and it has a, a nest on the uh, on the balcony and somebody puts out the washing, usually this person does not pay attention to this pigeon because they don't care. They will wash this anyway to dry, they will put this washing out anyway to dry. So these birds are usually used to the changes in the in the human created element. But it's good to, to re retain this cautiousness to put this hideout a bit away and then make it a bit closer. closer. And you always have to have two person approaching the hideout. One leaves, one stays. And also later, when you want to leave the hideout, you can call the second person to to come for us, not to betray this. Because if we leave the hideout, the birds will say, "Okay, so that probably somebody will standing there, if, uh, sitting there, even if it's empty, and they will not trust this place anymore." Okay. <laughs> One more question. I asked this question to you once, but I, I but you, you didn't you didn't answer me, so I saved it for the lecture. I really admire this film about the, the Żywkowo white stork, and there was a scene of a bird who, who which sings outside of a meadow in the light of a setting sun. How did you? Do that frame. How did you do that shot? Well, there was a meadow which was filled with grass, a huge meadow. And I went there by car, and it occurred that some person was mowing small fragments uh, of grass for his for his animals. And he mowed a really small Czy fragment. So the whole, the whole meadow was, the, the grass was uncut, and this one was, was cut. And by hearing um, a corn, corn crate, I stood, I stood there, and this corn crate was crying. So the, the another corn crate was not far away. This it was a very short time when I shot when I made this shot. I had two attempts and then the concrete did not go out on the on this on this field. He it just emerged from this meadow. It crowed and came back. So normally. Spowodowane tym, że tam jeszcze dwie godziny wcześniej była trawa. You know, it was like there was. Się zapędził. There was uh, grass uh, just a, a few moments uh, before, like two, two hours before. So this this concrete lost its um, cautiousness and just entered, fr e exited from that and entered in the other side. So it was just absolutely by chance, absolutely by chance. I was. I tried before to film a concrete, and I always failed for a very long time. Thank you. Okay, thank you.